everyone, and welcome to Money Show's virtual event. Next up is a true legend in the financial world, Larry Williams, the president of iReallyTrade.com. Today, Larry is going to share with us his secrets of a gold trader, real time, real money proof. We're going to take questions during the session. So if you want to type them in the box to the right of the video uh, platform there, we will take those in a couple of different breaks. And we are going to go a little longer than we'd originally planned. We're going to go for 45 minutes today. So you're in for a great treat. So Mr. Williams, please take it away. Thanks for being here. Greg, thank you very much. It's always a thrill to be here. And we will indeed try to squeeze a 30 minute presentation into 45 minutes. And if you have questions, uh, type them in as we go along. I'd like to answer the questions as we're talking about whatever slides we're looking at versus waiting until the end. So uh, the gold market, wow, what a market we've had this year. I'd like to talk about uh, real results in this market. And uh, what you're about to see is real time, real results, as opposed to theoretical, what we should have, could have done, all that kind of stuff. I think most commodity traders and uh, gold traders have totally unrealistic expectations of what to expect. So I pulled up the results of some uh, funds. These are actual funds that have been trading for quite a while. Uh, and you can see uh, they started trading 2001. And if we look at their annual rate of return, look at all these funds, annual rate of return, 7%, 15%, 0%, 9, 2, 13, 24, 6, 3, annual rate of return, 2, 6, 7. People have this great expectation that there's fortune to be made in this business. And there are for individual traders, but here's people with managing a lot of real time, real money, a lot of money under management. And the results, well, they leave a lot to be desired. In 2020, the best funds performance this year in the funds, look at that, up 4%, up 2%, up 2%, minus 1%. So again, people have this expectation that they can make a fortune trading gold or whatever commodity it is. And I'm just going to tell you that it's not realistic, that realistic golds, here's the iShare Gold Trust 2020 top performer, you can look at the various years and you know the performance is up and down. It's all over the place, down, 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 three years in a row down, another down year. So that's trading and you better get used to that. So here's what I've actually done, real time, real money with a actual account that we trade at Robbins uh, World Cup Advisor starting in 2019 in March was up 46% last year. This year, it's up 53.7%. But look at this, October, November last year, we're down months. And we had a down month in June this year, 13% down. Then we came back with uh, about 22% gain in the next two months. But that's real time. In other words, you better have an expectation that there's no straight paths to heaven, that it's a very choppy up and down and back and forth. And you just have to realize that and accept it. Because that's how it actually works in real time with real money. You can see the uh, performance in the gold line here is actually the S&P 500. And this is a performance of that automatic trading strategy. This is an automatic trading strategy. I don't know, I created the strategy, but I don't interact with it. It just fires away and gives buy and sell signals on a daily basis, not intraday, not day trading type of stuff. We also did that for the S&P E-minis. Uh, was up about 16% for August of this year. We've been doing it since 2014. Notice the first year we were down, then up 52%, down four, up 14, down 15, up 44% last year, up 33% this year. So again, there's no straight paths to heaven in this business and you better get used to up and downs. But nonetheless, the return's pretty spectacular. That averages out about 20% a year return, which is, I think really good and really realistic. If you can find a fund that's doing that for you, you're in really good shape. So many of these funds are doing six, 7% a year. It's not worth the risk because you are trading commodities. Here's the uh, performance of the blue line is the actual uh, strategy trading, real time, real money. These are real trades now. And the gold is the S&P itself. So you can see we've been able to outperform the S&P. So that's the good news. It is possible to beat the market with short-term trading strategies, which I'm going to be showing you as uh, the strategies that I use today in our, in our presentation. 
Uh, my youngest daughter, Paige, started doing this a while ago as well. She does a day trading strategy we call lazy day trader because, again, it's automatic. It buys on the opening or during a breakout. We don't watch the market during the day. And uh, so far uh, in the last uh, eight months, uh, she's got $9,858 profit. Um, so she's done really well. Uh, with the simple day trading strategy, it trades maybe three times, four times a month. In other words, we're waiting for patterns. I really believe patterns are important in the marketplace. And we've identified these patterns and I'm going to be teaching you some of those today, of course. And that's really a lot of what I look at are specific patterns in the market that are like springboards to what the market's going to do. And fundamentals, I think, are really important as well. Here's uh, Page's lazing day trading strategy. Last year was up 23%, this year up 67%. And again, this is real time, real money. This isn't hypothetical what we could have or should have done. This would actually happen with real time and real money in a real trading account. This is a small account, $8,000 is all that she funded it with because we're trading one contract on an interday basis. Or uh, yeah, on an interday, we're gonna be out at the end of uh, the close. We, we never hold over in this strategy. So again, there is good news because so many people lose so much money trading commodities. They lose confidence and they don't see any hope. Well, there is hope. Uh, if you're interested in those trading strategies, by the way, you can contract, contact Robin's Trading Company. You can actually take the exact same trades I take or the exact same trades my daughter takes. We all get the same fill prices. Um, so there's no, you get the same slippage I get. Oh, and I also publish my weekly commentary, ireadytrade.com. If you want to see what my specific market advice is on a weekly basis, we do something called Larry TV, where I show my charts and explain my trades and trades I see coming up. Okay, secrets of a gold trader. So what I'd like to show so far is, hey, I do this. I make money at it, a pretty good amount of money, 44% one year, 56% this year. Obviously, we have real things that really do work. And so I, I want to get to what I think is the essence of the gold market. It's driven by commercials, not politics. All the gold bugs and the gold bears and bulls are all political. <clears throat> and I don't think that moves the market a little bit, but not much because gold is a commodity that's used, it's consumed, it's produced. There's real supply demand figures to gold. And those mean more than inflation, deflation, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, all that stuff. It's a real market. I mean, does Joe Biden really affect wheat? Does Donald Trump really affect uh, uh, natural gas market or um, the soybean market? And these are real commodities that are really used. Um, gold is crude oil. I'm gonna show you some interesting intermarket relationships because one market can clearly predict another market and there's a market that does a great job of predicting where gold will go. I'm gonna show that to you in just a moment. And I'll be trading, showing you the several unique trading patterns that gold has so you understand how gold actually trades. So here's a really simple gold trading strategy. One thing I really believe in is keep it simple. You know, I grew up in Montana and we have a couple of great songs about it. And a, a, a cowboy's got a simple solution to just about everything. So what you're going to see today is very simplistic stuff. Uh, I don't have a background in math. Maybe that's why my stuff is really simple. Um, uh, but I, I like the simpler, the better, um, the more complex. And I have created some very complex systems <laughs> that they didn't hold up very well in real time. So that's a problem. Um, the stuff has to pan out in the future. It can't just show that it worked in the past. And I've found that simple things do hold up. Complex things don't hold up nearly as well. So here's the relationship of gold and black gold. Obviously the chart you see is the black line is gold. And notice how the red line almost matches gold. Well, all the red line is is crude oil prices flipped upside down. And in other words, when gold starts to uh, go down, crude oil has been going up. When crude oil is going down, then we'll see an inverse move in the gold market. They're just an inverse of one one market is almost the other. Not exactly, of course, there's a little discrepancy, but by and large, gold is just crude oil flipped upside down. Why is that important? Because as a trader, if you're 
uh, long gold and uh, short crude oil, you're in the same trade. You've doubled your risk with exactly the same trade. So that's one reason why it's important. The other reason we can use the energy markets to help us predict the gold market. Also, interest rates have a pretty good effect on the gold market. So we can use that to get a glimpse of what should happen in the future. Not exactly what's going to happen in the future because the future is very hard to predict. I don't think God wants us to know the future to any great specific extent, but we get a good glimpse of the roadmap of where gold is going so we can plan and trade accordingly. I'm gonna show you that today. Gold, I think, is driven by commercials. The red line you see at the bottom of the chart here, the higher it is, the more bullish, the more net long positions, these are real positions held by the users and producers, the commercials, these are people that mine gold, are the computer companies that buy gold, jewelers that buy gold. Notice when they're heavily long, and what happened to the price of gold? They're heavily long in this area, gold rallies. Heavily long back here, relative to where they've been, big rally in gold. <clears throat> now we very seldom see the commercials get net long gold. When they do, it's a very unusual event, and that's what happened back here. And again, last year, this year, we saw the commercials net long gold. They don't stay there very long because they are hedgers. So they're selling on the way up. But these net long positions in gold are about as close to a money in the bank trade as you're going to find. Um, so I really pay attention to the commercials. By the same token, when they're heavily short, uh, we tend to see markets decline. The public, and I'm getting these figures from the Commitment of Trader Report, if you're not aware of that report, it is issued by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission every Friday at 3.30 p.m. And it shows the actual positions held by the users and producers, the hedgers in the marketplace, the funds, the large traders, and the small traders, which I call the public, the green line or the public. And when the public is heavily long, look what happened. Oh. Gold went down. When they don't want to do any buying at all, they're short at this point or they're not net long gold rallies. Back here, this was the most bearish it had been for a couple of years and gold rallied. So I like to look at the public because the public in the gold market usually does the wrong thing at extremes. When they get extremely bullish, the uh, trend is over. The trend is going to end because the public is too heavily involved in the marketplace. And the nice thing about this commitment of trader report, hey, I've been using it since 1973. First person to ever write about it, but it's real. This is real contracts, real positions in the market, not somebody's idea of what gold should do based on some political uh, ideology, but what people are actually doing in the marketplace. Here you can see the public going way back now. And when the public is heavily long, look where we are, peaks in the marketplace. Peaks in the marketplace. Peak, the heavily long public, peaks in the marketplace. So it's a really good indicator. So, whoa, hold on. This move has been overdone. We better be a little cautious here. Uh, this thing is about over. Uh, so uh, it's not a timing tool that says buy or sell gold today. I call it a setup tool. And I think this is what most traders are missing. They get a buy signal or a sell signal, but you don't have any perception of where this fits in. What is the context of this buy signal of moving average crosses a moving average, whatever. Well, if that is, is a sell signal at a time when the small speculators are heavily bullish as they were here or they were over here, that's a significant sell signal or sell signals in this area are significant or in this area. But a sell signal down here when the public is very, very bearish on the market and we expect it to rally, those sell signals are almost meaningless. A buy signal, of course, would be very significant here, wouldn't it? Buy signals coming when the small speculators don't want to buy their net short here. Oh, that's a really good buy signal. So the commitment to trade report gives us a context to look at the market, to understand how markets move, I really encourage you to use the Commitment of Trader Report to get perspective of where we're going. So where are we right now? I'd like to show the report to you. 
the small speculators of the green line right here at the bottom of the chart, we've been looking at that, right? What well, is it any big shock that gold fell out of bed this week? Look where the small speculators are. This is the most bullish they've been since 2013 back here. Uh, see, there is a reason why markets do things. Markets don't move just because somebody started buying today. They develop conditions. The red line, of course, is the users, the producers of the marketplace. And this is where they were net long gold. Remember I said, this is like a money to bank trade, net long gold. Need I say more? Net long gold. Need I say more? So you're not gonna see this very often in your life, but when you do, guys and gals, mortgage your house, get a second mortgage, then get a third mortgage and put some money in your credit card and buy gold. So there's a time to be long gold and a time to be out of gold because gold doesn't always glitter. It's been glittering this year, uh, being driven by the fact that commercials were in that long position back here. <clears throat> now, large traders, I'd like to look at that a little bit. Large traders are the funds in the marketplace. And these guys have a really interesting track record as well. Let me, let me share this with you. The higher it is, the more long positions they have on. So down here, they didn't have very many long positions on at all and market bottom. Back here, they didn't have any long positions on and a market bottom. When they have a lot of long positions on, market top. A lot of long positions on, the market broke down, then commercials bought and we rallied back again. So the funds, which are the large traders, look like they don't make money because they're always heavily long up here at the peaks and not long at the bottoms. Why? That's how funds trade. This is how funds trade. As the market breaks out of this price area in here, they'll buy some contracts. As it goes higher, they'll buy more. They'll buy more. They'll buy more. It breaks out above this point, they'll buy more. So they add to their position on trend breaks to the upside. And then they may have bought, say, 5,000 contracts here on this breakout, 2,000 on this breakout, 1,000 on this breakout, 500. So the math of that is their average price is probably from around that 5,000, 2,000, 1,000, 500. Their average price is someplace maybe in here. But their net number of contracts is large here. They can still make money if they get out here because their average is back here because they scale in with 5,000, 2,000, 1,000, 500, 100. So it's deceptive. People say, well, how can they make money? Because they, were, they bought the peak and they sold the low. Mm, you have to understand they phase into their positions. And when they get a whole lot of positions on, think about this now, when the funds were the driving momentum player in the market, when they're heavily long in the market, they don't have any money left to buy gold with or pork bellies or whatever the market is. So another reason why this is such a good top indicator is because they're out of funds. They've committed all the money that they can to um, the market. So there isn't any money left in their kitty, if you will, to continue following that market. Okay, here's a great way to know what's gonna to happen to gold. The red line that you see is natural price. Hey, Larry, sorry yes. to interrupt. Just a couple of questions coming in, uh, uh, just maybe while before we move on in, to this other chart. Great. There were questions sort of asking for a little clarification of what you mean by the commercials and the large traders and, and, and how would our, our attendees find these kinds of charts? Uh, somebody mentioned they may be on stock charts. Yes, yeah, stock. Uh, I don't know that stock charts has them. We have them at TradeStation. TradeStation has them. Uh, they are released by the government uh, every Friday uh, at 3.30. Uh, there's several sources on the internet that have them. Uh, it's how you read them, understand them, of course. Um, but there are three players, the small speculators, which is the little guys, the commercials, which are the hedgers, the users and producers, and finally the funds, the blue line on my chart. Uh, those are the three parts. And I like to look at that versus open interest to see who's the driving force behind open interest. So it's a bit of a of a reading, uh, but uh, it's clearly, it's been one of the real strong points of my work uh, going back to 1973 uh, when I first wrote about it. nobody ever even knew what the report was, it was very uh, rudimentary back then. Now it's a great report and it's very valuable. 
I Thank hope you. that answers the question. I think so. Okay, so look at this chart. The red line, we knew this low, this forecast low, 25 days. In other words, when gold was back here, we were looking for the market to rally. This red line is projected 25 days in the future. So, oh, look at this. Gold fell out of bed. Well, look what the projection is. So the red line, remember, we can, this red line is projected 25 days into the future. So this point was known actually back here. This point for a rally was known back over here. So all that I'm doing here is projecting natural gas prices 25 days into the future. And of course, it's an inverse relationship like we talked about in crude oil. And uh, you can do the same with crude oil. Uh, natural gas has been working really well uh, as well as a predictor. So to me, it's not any great surprise that we saw gold come down this week because we had the small speculators, remember, they were really bullish. And now we see a projection fundamentally that the market should come down. And we saw the large speculators were heavily on the short side. So it starts to kind of all come together to coalesce. You're like, oh yeah, this market's getting up to sell short. Now in my case today uh, or yesterday, I sold platinum, not gold. Had a choice, platinum, gold, or silver. Uh, they're all in the same family, but platinum had been weaker. So my actual short position I'm in right now is 40 or 50 contracts short of platinum uh, because it has been comparatively weaker. Uh, but you see why, right? There's the forecast. Uh, we saw the, the uh, small speculators back here were really bullish. Uh, we get a fundamental forecast that we're going to go lower. So that's how I trade the market on an intermediate term basis. I'm looking for these setups in the marketplace as opposed to technical analysis because frankly, uh, I think a lot of technical analysis is just a lot of voodoo, hoodoo stuff. Um, I think conditions drive markets. Then once we establish those conditions, we can bring in technical analysis. That's where it has its benefit. That's where it can be very helpful. So here's a big one I always get asked, what's gonna to happen to gold when stocks crash? If we have a big crash coming up, as some people are, are forecasting that, now what will happen to the price of gold? Unless you've seen my presentation before, you probably are clueless. So old wives tale. Here's the market crash in 2008. The market crashes in 2008, that's a black line and oh, the blue line gold also came down. Oh, it's not supposed to be that way. I thought in a stock market crash, gold rallied. And here we see the crash of 2015, stocks came down, big, big sell off and gold came down. In the crash of 1987, the stock is the black line and gold is a green line, gold is the red line. Uh, look what happened, stocks crash and gold crashed. But not supposed to be that way, right? It's an old wives tale. It's one of the oldest wives tale in Wall Street. When stocks crash, gold will rally. No, it doesn't. Here's the crash of 1984 in stocks. Whoa, this is 1983, 1984, 1985. We've got a year in the downside and uh, gold went down. I thought it was supposed to rally. Uh, no, it doesn't, does it? How about the crash of 1990? Had a big hit in the market. Whoa, it came straight down and the red line gold also went down. The crash of 2000, 2002, big bear market. Gold came down for the most part, rallied a little bit at the end. And then when stocks went up, gold went up. So I know you gold bugs are probably going crazy. You can't believe this, but this is real. These are, this is nothing I made up. This is the way it actually is. In fact, if you go back and look at 1929, gold prices went down when stocks went down. How, well, how about right now, 2020, what happened when stocks crashed, the black line up here, oh, stock crashed and uh, there's gold. Gold came down too. When did gold start to go up? When stocks started to go up. Amazing, isn't it? All this time people have been telling you that when stocks crash, gold will go up. Get that notion out of your head. 
It's not real. That's an old wives tale. So there are conditions that make gold go up as I think I've showed you. I'm gonna show you a few more now. As a short term trader, I really like this. I noticed this way back in the 19, early 1980s. Gold has a pattern to it, the way it trades during the week. It tends to be stronger on Thursdays and Friday. If you just bought gold every Thursday, had a protective stop, got out on the first profitable opening, you make $35,000. If you buy it every Friday, you make $52,000. But if you buy it on Monday, you lose 21,000. Tuesday, you lose 21,000. Wednesday, you lose $31,000. Now, I wouldn't just go buy gold because it's Thursday or Friday because the average profit per trade is real small, but it shows, wow, look at that. There's a real bias here, isn't there? Gold doesn't do well in the first part of the week. It does well in the middle of the week. In fact, what day does gold do the worst? Wednesday. What happened to gold today? Got clobbered. Today's Wednesday, hey, hey, there it is again. In other words, all these markets, I think have a fingerprint to the way they trade, probably because of the way the commercials and the institutions go about putting their positions into the marketplace. But here's just another example. And you know, I made these PowerPoints, I don't know, a long time ago. Here it is, Wednesday, big down day in the gold market, exactly what we would expect. So there's your first insight into trading gold. There are a lot of unique patterns in gold. I'd like to talk to you about these patterns now. Um, I'm gonna, Greg, if we have any questions that have come in before I get into the minutia of the little patterns. If we so, have, great. Yeah, we've, we've had some questions, a, a, a couple I think that might be useful now. Uh, Edward wanted to know, do you consider your trading method to be contrarian trading? Um, yes and no, contrarian. Yeah, I hope nobody else is taking my trades, but um, I want to be in phase as a shorter term trader with the trend because the trend is a heck of a lot smarter than I am. The trend, it's just amazing how long trends can persist. So, so there I'm with the trend I'm with probably, but, but most traders, I think, think the trend's going to end. And I think the trend's going to persist an object once set in motion tends to stay in motion. So I'm, contrarian to the public, but I'm with the commercials. I'm contrarian to the people that think the trend will end and I'm with the trend as much as I can be. Okay, hey, good. Um, another one from Don says, you obviously see the price of gold correcting. How far down do you think it will go? I wish I knew, I'm not that smart. Uh, okay. uh, here's my real problem as a trader. I uh, can have a pretty good idea of the time the market's going to go down or, or rally, but I can't get the magnitude. I, I can get some targets and objectives and, you know, it's in all the commodity books, but so far I have not been able to crack that code of it will top out at exactly this price and bottom at exactly this price. I, um, you know, I'm still working on that. It's one reason why this year, the end of year, I'm gonna retire and find out how good of a trader I can really be and not do all this stuff that I've been doing in the past. I really wanna see uh, how good I am and maybe I'll crack that at that point. But at this point, all I know is general time zone. So how do I handle the trade? Well, I have a target profit in the trade and I have a trailing stop because you don't always go to these price points, targets or whatever they are. So I have to have a trailing stop in the market as well. So I'm covered that way uh, for whatever's going to take place. I, I think I've covered my basis pretty well. If we start a big rally, or here in this case, I'm short platinum, and I have targets below the market based on swing points, um, I may not go there. So I'll also have a trailing stop. Okay, I think that does it for now. Okay, so here's a real simple trade. It's as accurate as about 75% of the time, uh, real simple. Buy if today is uh, close is greater than the close 30 days ago. Uh, and we want to buy on certain days of the week. Makes $23,000, $255 average profit per trade. Hmm, we're starting to build something here. If tomorrow is Friday though, remember we saw how Fridays are the big days? 
and we're in an uptrend. We're greater than 170 days ago, and we're greater than six days ago. We're going to buy Friday. That's it. That's all we're going to do. You know, you buy on the, it's actually the Thursday night opening, uh, and we're going to hold and get out in the first profitable opening after being in the trade for one day and have a protective stop. We have 200 trades from 2000 to 2020. Average win, $900. Average loss, $175. Maximum winners in a row, you can't handle this, 26 winners in a row. And you probably can't handle seven losses in a row. That's why I showed you those slides at the first of this presentation, real time, real performance. You see that the funds A don't do all that well. And even where I'm up 40%, 43% last year, 56% this year, not every month was up. And you better get used to that. Um, this business of trading, uh, so many irrational things happen that you, your mindset has to be, hey, anything can happen. I'm, I'm going to have downs in this market, um, but that doesn't mean I'm down and out. Uh, what I like to do is look at my trades, especially my losing trades, and say, what can I learn here? What did I do wrong? I go over my losing trades. I don't think I learned too much from my winning trades, but my losing trades, oh yeah, I didn't think of this or that. To me, uh, losing trades are a wonderful experience to learn. And the markets will give us exactly what we need to learn. By that, I know I need to learn to have better price objectives. And I know that because I'm, I'm holding positions too long with a huge, I had a nice profit in, I think bonds this year, a couple hundred thousand dollars. And I ended up taking like $60,000 out of it. So boy, the market's telling me, Larry, you better learn how to take profits better. So the market will tell you what you need to learn. Okay, anyway, back to short-term trade. So we're gonna buy basically on a Friday if the market's in an uptrend with 77% winners. Well, how about short-term gold trade number two? Tomorrow's Monday. And we have a down close on Friday. So Friday closed down, but we're in an uptrend. I'm going to buy tomorrow on Monday. Uh, uh, tomorrow is Monday at the prior day's high on a stop. So I've got a market that's pulled down on Friday. Usually we kind of have strength on Friday. We pull down on Friday. We're in an uptrend. I'm going to buy at Friday's high on a stop. Real simple stuff. 90% winners. $28,700 profit, average trade $450, maximum drawdown $3,500, about three days in the trade. So see how simple this stuff can be? You don't have to have exponential front end weighted supersonic moving averages and artificial intelligence. There are really some simple patterns that work so well in the markets. Here's the current price analog. I am intrigued by these. I don't put a lot of credibility in them. But to me, this business of trading is like opening a, a, a combination lock. You go three turns to the right to 17, four turns to the left to nine, two turns back to 11 and the lock opens. I like to have a lot of stuff confirming a trade. The blue line you see here is simply the price of gold from 2006. In other words, what's happening this year pretty much looks like what happened in 2006, isn't it? I'm using timing solution software to do this with, by the way, great software. So, uh, and again, notice I, I did the PowerPoints, uh, maybe Friday, I forget when I did them last week over the weekend. And this is what we should be. So we continue to follow the general analog. We're on the 2006 roadmap, if you will. So that gives me some insight in what my expectation and was one more reason that I sold platinum this week. I also like to use cycles. So I'd like to show you my cycle forecast. Uh, I also did this a couple of days ago. You can see that generally speaking, we have lows in gold about every eight months, about every eight months. We've got a big gold low coming up in a bit in terms of the shorter term basis. We're gonna come down into the middle of September, end of October rally, another buy point uh, just after the election. So I'll look at these points. And again, the problem is, and this is I've spent too much time with cycles, I think. 
it doesn't mean the markets have a massive move. It just means there's a buy point over here, a buy point here, a buy point here, a buy here, and a better buy here. It doesn't mean we'll have this size of a move or this size of a move. Cycles only say, expect a peak here, a peak over here, a peak here. It does not tell us the magnitude of the move. I think the magnitude of the move really comes from the news of the day, from the fundamentals, from maybe when somebody gets successfully short and has to cover short position. But what what's topical today is what I think causes the magnitude, why it's probably so hard to predict mag magnitude. But there it is. You can see uh, what my cycle forecast is that I'm operating on in terms of, of my uh, position that I'll be taking uh, in the gold market. I also look at the seasonal pattern. So I've, the seasonal pattern is a blue line here and look where we are. Seasonal patterns that we usually start to go down now in gold, just as we started to go up in gold back here and we did go up. So I also like to look at seasonal patterns to give me a sense of what we're going to be doing in the future. Uh, I, I like to have a view of the future. It's not a, it's occluded a lot of the time, but it's better to have a little bit of a view than no view of the future at all, because I can put things in perspective. Well, here's a really insight into gold. You're going to love this one. If you buy on the opening of the 15th trading day, almost in the middle of the month, the 15th trading day of all months, uh, you make $52,000 with almost 70% accuracy. Um, so that's all months around what we see. Look at all the green numbers here. Around the 15th trading day of all months, gold tends to rally uh, the most. Uh, so can we use that as a trader? Yes. If I look at buying on the 15th trading day, not calendar day, but trading day, uh, I don't want to do it in May and I don't want to do it in July, but I wanted to do it in August, didn't I? Whoa, it was again profitable last year. And we've got the 15th trading day of September. They've been good in September, not so good in October. So nice, easy trade. We can buy on the 15th trading day of January, February, March, August, September, November is the best one in December. Very consistent over a long time period. I also like to look at best days of the year. Gold tends to get strong around Christmas. In fact, if you buy gold on the 252nd trading day of the year, 92% uh, of those trades have been winners. In the last 13 years, only one time was it not a loser, uh, was it not a winner. Trading day 251 also, notice that a lot of strength right around trading day 251 and 252. Also trading day 65, 64, 66, look at these, 84% accuracy, almost 90% accuracy, 67 days. So around the 65th trading day of every year, gold rallies. Why? Probably because commercials start to buy gold for whatever purposes at that time. Uh, some commercial driven influence that goes on around trading day 250, 252, trading day 65, 66, and trading day 35, look at 35, 34. Oh, we have another nice seasonal sweet spot there. So those are spots I can just hold back and wait. Like I know I have got a really good sell signal coming up for stocks this month. Uh, about seven, eight trading days left in September. We're gonna have a stock market decline for at least a couple of days. I know that based on these patterns. So here's the August pattern. Uh, I did this for a webinar for uh, uh, Traders Expo. Uh, a couple of months ago, uh, and well, you know what happened in August this year, right? This is pretty much what happened. This was un all we knew, and this would actually happen, a nice rally. Okay, what about right here, right now? Well, here we are for September. The seasonal pattern for September is to the downside. A bounce around the 14th uh, calendar day of the month, a little rally, and then we come back down again. Oh, that's that 15th trading day of the month, right about in here, isn't it? Kicks up for a couple of days and then it comes down uh, to October. So this is from here to here is September. And that's the roadmap that prices most likely will take in September for the price of gold. Another thing I do, I do this every uh, first of every month in my uh, uh, weekly market commentaries 
we look at every trading day of the month. There can be 23 trading days in a month. They don't happen often. We've only had uh, eight 23 trading days in August, uh, going back to the last uh, 19 years. But notice that the sixth trading day of August rallied 72% of the time, and the 14th trading day of August, 83% of the time. Well, we now know what happened in August this year. These are both nice buy points. So we can get a sense of short-term trading opportunities by simply looking at my trading day of the month strategy. Usually we've seen strength around trading day 5, 6 of August, trading day 13, 14 of August. I know August is done though, right? You're probably wondering, well, Larry, what about September? Well, here it is. September, the first couple of trading days have been strong, but the month is basically red, a little green, red. So the really strong points have been to be a seller around trading day 17, 18. There's trading day 15, that's a positive one, right? A little bit of strength around trading day 10. But there's been no really numbers, no real high accuracy trade in here. 83%, uh, the 15th trading day has been the most accurate one, but we would expect that, wouldn't we? So these give me setups to be prepared uh, this coming month of what to be doing in the marketplace. Well, here's another hey, trade. Hey, Larry, yeah. just yeah. wanted you to know we're about five minutes to go here, so. <laughs> I got it, I'm wrapping up right now. All right, cool. So here's another trade for you. This is a 93% percent R trade. Real easy trade, guys and gals. If a 12-day percent R is less than 12, so we're oversold, and we're close is above 185-day moving average, we're gonna buy. That's it, we're gonna exit when a 12-day percent R is above 80. Well, there's been 30 trades like that, 93% winners, making $40,000. Real simple trade, percent R is oversold, we're in an uptrend, we're gonna buy, we're gonna get out when percent R is overbought again, that's it. Here's a weekly cycle projection of gold. I think this is where we're going. We're gonna come down around the end of this month, bounce, but a better opportunity to, for the next big rally, I think is gonna be around 11.7 to 11.30. If you want to follow me, you can do that. Uh, the uh, actual trading accounts at Robbins Trading Company or uh, iReallyTrade.com, my weekly market commentaries, it's uh, 30 bucks a month, I think. Uh, I'd like to thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Money Show and Traders Expo for having me. And if you have many questions, this is a great time to ask them. Thanks, Larry. Great presentation as always. We really appreciate your joining us. Uh, we have a variety of questions here. They're jumping around a little bit, so uh, it's a little it's a little hard to follow, sort of. Um, I want to ask an earlier one. Uh, why is there an inverse relationship between natural gas, oil, and gold? I don't know. Uh, I could come up with conjecture. But as a trader, I don't care. I've just found this. I've used this relationship for a long time. So I'm a realist. I, I don't necessarily have to know why. Good point. <laughs> so uh, Edward was mentioning that uh, entry points are sometimes easier, but the exits are much harder. Uh, so any guidance there on kind of what's the best way to kind of to plan a trade and how to how to know when to get out? If, discipline perhaps <laughs> well discipline if you get a winning trade you want to stay with it as long as you can so trailing stops are really important you want to ride these winning trades they're so damn hard to get when you get them you want to try to stay with them so targets and trailing stops gotcha and are there any gold trends around elections because we certainly have that coming up soon right uh, there is a gold trend uh, around the holiday, uh, I'm sorry, around uh, the election, and there is in presidential years. I don't have the data right now in front of me to tell you, but yeah, there, there have been some influence, not as strong as the stock market influence. The stock will rally right after the election. I don't care who gets elected. You get elect a, a dog, and the stocks always rally right after the election, so get ready for that. All right, good. Well, Larry, I think that's about all the time we have. Uh, wish we could take a lot more questions, but I think uh, we're going to have to pass for today. And I just want to thank you again for sharing all your knowledge with us. It's uh, always so valuable what you bring to us and, uh, and to our attendees. So thanks My a pleasure. lot for being a part of, part of this. Yeah, it's fantastic. My joy and good luck and good trading to everybody. It's been thrilled to be here today. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks a lot, Larry.